So ladies and gentlemen, my name is Sharon Whiteman, and it's my great pleasure and privilege to be here with Diana Hunter and Gary Knapp every week. We love being with you guys, and uh, we love sitting, linking arms with you and learning to be the best we can be on behalf of this great company. We're very privileged to have Mary Jo Hilliker, Silver Presidential today. She's an attorney, a mindset coach, a functional nutritionist, author, and member of numerous charitable boards. She's committed to impacting as many people as possible through her coaching and educational courses to support personal breakthroughs from limiting beliefs, many of which they don't know that they don't know. One might ask, then how do I know I have them? Well, everyone does. And that's why she's so convicted to empower people to truly take back control of their most critical asset, their mind, and to step into the life that they perhaps have only dreamt of. As successful as she was through her 30s, including being VP and general counsel of a publicly traded company at the young age of 28, she was frustrated by some of the things in her life that just weren't working. She refused to accept life as it was, so she searched to uncover why life wasn't working out. Such discovery work took her to an even more credible, incredible level of success, multiple streams of income, deep relationships, and unlimited involvement in charitable endeavors beyond even her expectations. Her number one core value is contribution. Mary Jo is passionate about each of our success, and we're, she's going to cover some things about incentives and also about her kryptonite breakthrough program, which is designed for you to grasp and empower yourself and your goals. So Mary Jo, we're so privileged to have you. Well, thank you for having me. I, I, like I said, I'm always in the available to contribute to people's lives. That's my whole direction today in life, uh, obviously, because I discovered it was my number one core value back in my 30s. So it's uh, it's really wonderful to live that your main core values. It's the greatest joy you're going to have in your life when you can live your core values. But most people live their whole life without even knowing what they are. Mm -hmm. And that's a huge problem. It's just, we go through confusion, we go through anger, we go through all sorts of emotional disruptions. We have broken relationships. We have all sorts of things that transpire in our life. And, and we can always point fingers, right? We're really good at pointing fingers at whose fault it is and all this kind of stuff. But rarely does that finger curl back around and point at ourselves. Mm -hmm. and, and that's really the first place we need to look. But we need to really examine ourselves and say, you know, what is it about me that's creating all this in my life instead of blaming it on everything else that's around us? And that's um, what I did in my late 30s. I, I had a, my first marriage lasted a year and a half. Not what you call a great success. Right. And I said, I'm never getting married again. <laughs> now I've been in a 30 year marriage. In fact, we're celebrating in this month, our 30th anniversary. So how cool is that? And it's just, um, it's just being able to really figure out, you know, what is this all about? What am I here for? What is my purpose? What is my drive? And again, my faith was always with me, but I had a lot of confusion about life and, and how it works and who I am as a person thinking that I was, you know, basically my experiences in life instead of who I chose to be and what my core values were which is that a discovery work. So with all that in mind, yeah, I love coaching now. I, I set up, uh, a lot of you know me from Manatech, of course, because I've been in Manatech for, you know, what, almost 30 years, is it? I can't believe it's something like that. 28, well, 28, 28, yeah. Pretty, pretty long time. And just to reiterate, how did Mary Jo get, how does somebody with all that success in her life end up in network marketing? Because most people get into network marketing trying to find another source of income, which by the way is awesome today because why? We have a huge trend here in the United States and probably in Australia as well. People are quitting jobs in droves. You know, everybody's looking for multiple streams of income. If that's not, that is perhaps the most favorite phrase in our society today is multiple streams of income. And so Mary Jo, I'm, I'm just going to pop off camera, but I'll be right here and okay. I'll watch for questions. And if there's questions at the end, I'll bring them back on. Okay. Perfect. 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 Okay. So anyway, so we always talk about those multiple streams of income. And this is a beautiful phrase that we need to be using more and more of because people really want more time freedom in their life. They really value that. And so what happened to me in my, in my, in the 1990s, I ended up, you know, I already had real estate investments and I'd done some other things, exciting things with my cash flow and investing in the stock market and other, other things. But 
But my dad got very sick, and a lot of you know my story, and I went on a search. I mean, I had no nutrition background. I was healthy because I learned how to eat healthy early on in life, and I kept that path, which, by the way, I'm now 67 years old. Most people laugh, and they go, no, you must be 47. I go, no, no, 67, and I've never been on a prescription drug. Isn't that awesome? So I celebrate that every day of my life, too. But uh, but the idea was my dad was very sick, and he had an aging condition condition. And I decided, even though being the baby of the family, I was going to solve his problem. And that's what sent me on a path. And when Mary Jo gets on a path, she's very determined. Right? So and I was very determined, I researched everything in the drug world, and I threw it all out because it had no impact whatsoever, except to mask symptoms. And I wasn't looking for masking, I was looking for a solution. And then I went in the nutrition field. And by, and I won't go through all the circumstances, but I came across that famous science we all are familiar with called glycobiology. And then I thought, wow, I'm going to look and see, maybe there's a company that makes a glyconutrient type product with these, these glyco sources for cellular communication, because that's what made sense to me. My dad's cells weren't communicating. So I wanted to find something that would help that, restore that, and maybe that would be a solution. And it turned out I came across the company called Manatech. And I told my husband, I'm going to go fly to this company and interview the doctors and blah, 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 blah. Right. And I went back and looked up Manatech on the on the internet. And the company was 30 minutes from my house. No kidding. And I was like, okay, being a woman of faith, I was like, okay, Lord, you're telling me something here. And I went over and I interviewed with, you know, Dr. McAnally and all, all our, you know, fam famous doctors from our past. And, and um, I said, okay, I want to buy the product. And of course they wouldn't sell it to me because it was a network marketing company. And I was like, what's that? I had never been associated with one in my entire life. And um, that's what got me started with Manatech. Um, and um, the, the rest is history. I mean, my dad had miraculous results with it and actually ended up outliving my mom, getting back on the golf course again and golfing, which is, you know, he retired in Sun City, West Arizona. And that's what he, all he wanted to do was golf, right? So it was a beautiful story. But of course, when you have that kind of uh, experience in life, you get a real big conviction because of what it did for my dad. I knew this could help lots of people. And that's what drove me and continues to drive me. I still do Manatech as one of many things that I do. I love going out and helping people. And that's my whole being, you know, discovering that core value of uh, number one core value of mine of contribution. You know that you know that you know I'm always there to contribute to people. And, and a big way to do that is through Manatech as a vehicle. We have a huge vehicle. And today, it's even more fun because you have this whole concept of people looking for multiple streams of income. And I think in the past, when we used to, you know, talk about Manatech from a perspective of, you know, choose it as a job or job security or as a your exclusive cash flow vehicle, I think we put a lot of pressure on, you know, developing, you know, the kind of businesses that might throw off 60, 80, hundred thousand dollars a year. And and that's, you know. Does that happen in Manatech? Of course it can happen, but it's not the average experience in Manatech. And that's what makes today such an incredible opportunity for all of us because people are talking about multiple streams of income. Now I can go out and help anyone develop a Manatech business as, a multiple, as one of their multiple streams of income. And so, so it doesn't put the pressure on me believing this person's gonna be a uh, silver presidential, right? It's just, you can build it as large as you want, but you can build it to make a couple thousand extra dollars a month. A lot of people would give their right arm to just get a couple extra thousand dollars. In fact, we're doing lots of programs here in the US with, uh, you know, we have all these apps that they're getting us to use, funnel systems, and we're finding the average person is looking for another stream of income that would produce one to $2,000 a month. Now that's something, Every one of you can easily go out and supply to people through the Manatech vehicle, right? So I, that's why I think it's, it's even easier today than it was in the past because of this whole transition where people are looking at multiple streams of income. So we love the Manatech vehicle. I love doing it. I love helping people with that concept in their life because financial security is core to truly living a life of fulfillment.
because you don't want to be spending your whole life chasing dollars. And so that's why I cherish it and I cherish it for other people as well. So, but one of the elements and one of the things that Sharon wanted me to talk about too today was not just my experience around Manitech, which I love. And, and it took me to, by the way, I've been to Australia a number of times on Manitech's bill. I mean, they sent me to <laughs> Australia. I ended up in New Zealand. And so I love the country. I love all the experience that I had with you guys when I was in Australia. Thank you. Thank you for all your wonderful, you know, service of Mary Jo taking care of me while I was there, making sure I was traveling across the country, <laughs> doing all sorts of presentations for all of you. And by the way, I'm, I'm more than happy to come back anytime you're ready to have me back. But the other thing that I recognized in life, which I talked about earlier, is that, you know, I, I was living a life early on in my life where I was highly successful. I mean, I had a tremendous career. I was always top of my class, very competitive, always had to win at everything. I had it. I went to law school and graduated top part of my class in law school. I ended up with a huge job at a big law firm. Three, four years later, I was hired away by a multi-billion dollar publicly traded corporation to be vice president general counsel at the age of 28 years old, which is ridiculous, especially at that stage in our country, women didn't quite hold those kind of jobs back then, but it was awesome. And I was having so much fun, but the ethics were so bad. And one of the lessons I love to teach people around that is that um, if you can't change the ethics, the ethics will change you. So after two years in that plum job, which allowed me to work eight till five, unlike the law firm, which was like eight until 10 at night, every six days a week, I, I got my life back. But the idea of, I was not comfortable in an environment where the ethics were always challenged. So I left and ended up moving to San Antonio, bought a number of companies, made some investments that turned out terrific, one of which started my charitable foundation, uh, because I didn't know, I, I think some of you know the story, I somebody said, Mary Jo, how about investing in a fish food company? And I was like, fish food company? I said, I do cats, I don't do fish, right? You know, that was my response. <laughs> and uh, But anyway, I, I introduced myself, I said, okay, I'll look at it, and I looked at it, and I ended up investing $20,000 in this fish food company in Cibolo, Texas, a small little town outside San Antonio. And six years later, my $20,000 investment became $1.1 million because Walmart chose to take this fish food and put it on their shelves. You get this? And I was like, whoa, I, don't, I was like, I don't want to pay income tax on $1.1 million, right? I'm like, I'm not giving the, so I set up a charitable foundation. I transferred the stock into the charitable foundation before they paid it out. So that started in seed money for my charitable foundation. Now, a lot of people go, how do you give away 1.1 million? I said, very easily, right? Because once you do that one time, you realize you can do it many times, right? It's like, it's just the, we all have the capacity to go out there and make money. It's just taking advantage of opportunities that flow our way. So I, I love the story because it, I love it's part of my heart. I wasn't even worth $1.1 million when I gave that away. Does that make sense? I mean, it was like it was like giving away 75% of my net worth. <laughs> and, uh, but it was a wonderful thing. And that charitable foundation still is going today. And I do a lot of coaching out of that and a lot of, you know, international uh, work in the in the mission field. So that's a great opportunity too. But through 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 all of the things that transpired in my life, you know, the the foundation has always been how to help people to be as healthy as they can be, and how to be as good as they can be. And and going through the change I went through about five years ago, I was looking at Mary Jo. There's something more that you have on your heart. So I knew that I was saying, you know, I have my faith walk. I've got Manatech, which I love dearly, and I love to help people with health and 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 just massive numbers I've already made a difference in their life and continue to do that uh, but I there was something missing for a lot of people even in all my coaching experience and I I decided to set up a brand new company because I really felt that the number one thing that holds people back is their limited thinking right it's our limited thinking and so I I went to some courses. In fact, some of you might be familiar with Bill Walsh and the Rainmaker program that we had in the United States. Bill Walsh is actually a good friend of mine and I took his course and actually brought him to Manitech three years later. But after taking Bill Walsh's course, 
I, I said, well, I, if I'm setting up a new company, let's make it make sure it's around mindset work. So I set up a company called Global Mindset Mastery Association, and I started with a preliminary course called Kryptonite Breakthrough. Now, I know all of you know Superman, and you know what kryptonite was for Superman, right? Now, none of us are supermen or superwomen, but the kryptonite is something that's in every one of our lives. And it's called our past. Our kryptonite is when we're little kids, you know, we grow up as little kids. And first of all, recognize the fact that when you're like one, two, or three years old, all you're doing is you're pooping and peeing and you're sucking on your mother's tit and you're like, if all you care about is, you know, food and getting your diaper changed. And that's it. There's really, they've determined that your mind really doesn't start operating till you're maybe around three and a half, four years old. They don't know exactly, but that's what they surmise, the professionals, right? But after the time we get to about three and a half, four, now our mind starts operating, but it operates without any knowledge bank. Okay, so imagine just a clean slate, you know nothing. And what happens to us is facts happen in our life, different things transpire in our life. We live in a family, our environment, things down the block. And what happens is we start, we take facts in our lives, and we associate a meaning to them. Now, acknowledging we have no knowledge at that early stage of our life, what kind of meanings do we give facts? You're right, meanings we just make up. We just make up. And as a four-year-old, you're not a very effective at taking into account all the possibilities in life because you have virtually no, very, very, not, very few, if any, possibilities of rationalizing a good conclusion about what that fact meant, right? So this is a huge piece of my course. I, it's an eight-week course. This is one of the first things I kick off and teach because it's important to understand that when we have these facts that enter into our lives and we give them a meaning, that meaning typically has nothing to do with reality. It's just an assumption we made about the fact that happened in our life. Now, some of you are going, well, Mary Jo, give me some examples of what that might look like. Well, I'll give you a couple about Mary Jo, just because that's my prime I want to have the most information about, right? So here was one for me. So I was fourth born of four kids in three and a half years, right? My parents, one, 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 three and a half years, they had four children and two boys two, and two girls, and I was the last one to come out. Now, we were a relatively poor family. So probably age of four or something like that, I was looking around in my environment and looking at the Christmas tree with that one little itty bitty gift, right? Little itty bitty gift under the tree and sitting down at the dinner table and everybody grabbing for food. And who is the smallest one? Me. So I came to the conclusion that fourth born, fourth kids, I, I came to the conclusion that what it meant to me was if I don't compete I will get nothing in this life. See, you, how many people on here are competitive? You can raise your hand and say, Mary Jo, that's me. I have to win at everything I brought, right? I, 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 and if you're not that way, okay, two raise their hands, right? That's me, that's me, that's me. If you're not that way, then, then you still like to win, right? We still like to win, but, you know, we just do our best. Well, here was Mary Jo. I didn't just like to win. I had to win. So, so here I was, I had to win everything. I ran for all these class presents. I, I had to win all my basketball games. I had to win at everything. If you were my best friend and you and I went out and played tennis and you beat me, I probably wouldn't be able to talk to you for a day or two. That's how competitive, how many of you know somebody that competitive, right? Okay. You can raise your own hand too. So that was my life that I had for 30 some years. Now, how does that work out in a marriage? Okay, everybody go like this. Mary Jo, it doesn't work, right? <laughs> not so great. Thank you, Diana. Yes, not so great. And that's what happened to my first marriage. It lasted all of a year and a half. And then I came to the conclusion, well, I don't know why it failed, but I'm sure not doing that again, right? <laughs> because I wanted everything I touched to turn to gold. So I was like, I was done with relations and I wasn't going to get married again, blah, 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 blah. So, and so 
the meaning that I gave early on in my childhood about being fourth born controlled my life for 38 years until I took this course. And I discovered that I had given the fact of fourth born of four kids means I had to compete. Here, I just thought I was a competitive person. And you know, from that day forward, you and I could play racquetball anytime. If you beat me, I'd take you out for beer. No problem. I realized I could lose and still be joyful because I didn't have to win at everything. Think of the load off my back for 38 years. And, and I was no dumb person. I mean, I more degrees than a thermometer, as my brother and sister say. I mean, but it was how I was what? How I was programmed by myself, my own interpretation of my environment, right? And all of us have stuff like this. I'll throw one more out at you that I'm not really proud of either, but I don't know. I was a bedwetter, okay? How many people like to talk about wetting the bed? Not very many, but I love the story because here I was a bedwetter, right? And, and no one else in my family, but Mary Jo. And my dad would spank me every morning if I wet the bed. And so here was this little kid, four years old, five years old. I'd go, I'd go to potty five times before I went to bed at night. And then I would go to sleep. I go to my bed and I go like this. And I go, okay, if I just hold my eyes open, I'll stay awake. And then I, I'll be able to know when I have to go potty. And, you know, eventually that poor little girl would just finally drift off and invariably a couple times a week wet the bed. And sure enough, what did my dad do? Spank me. Now, you can get mad at your dad because he, he didn't know any better. He thought that I should learn a lesson, right? So here I was spanked four, five, six years old, finally around seven, I think it was before I finally lost that habit. But what did I make it mean? Another fact, fact, I was being spanked for something I had no control over. Meaning I gave it? If I'm not in authority, I will be abused. I will be mistreated. Wow. Is that crazy? But look at what happened to me. Mary Jo, I grew up and in sixth grade, I heard my brothers and sisters, they had all these people running for class president. My, my brothers and sisters never ran for anything. Very bright, very intelligent, but never ran for any office. So here I hear about these having class officers. And I went to my sixth grade teacher and said, hey, you know what? Why don't we have class officers in sixth grade? And here this poor guy's at a grade school going, well, Mary Jo, yeah, well, yeah, okay, we could do that. And of course, I was bright enough to look around my classroom and say, ooh, there are 15 girls and 14 boys. So I'm going to run on a pure sex ticket. And guess what? I won 15 to 14, right? So there I was, class president. Well, what do you think I became? Class president, student council president. I ran every single thing. Ninth grade, 10th grade, 11th grade, 12th grade. All, don't you guys, because 7th grade, 8th grade, all of it. I was always class president, student council president. In fact, our 50th class reunions coming up in Wisconsin. I live in Texas and had for 30 some years. But guess who's assigned to organize the whole reunion in Wisconsin? Yep. Raise your hand, Mary Jo. <laughs> okay. So, but look at the funny thing about it. I didn't realize it. I knew I was different than my brothers and sisters, but we had the same parents. Why was I so uniquely different? Because fact meaning. I wet my bed. I got punished for something I had no control over. So what did I make it mean? That if I'm not in control, I'm going to be mistreated. Do you follow me? So when that awakening came to me in my 30s as well, in all of this, I was like, oh my gosh, now I love seeing other people and encouraging others to take control and take leadership roles. And I abdicate all the time because I love watching other people have that incredible experience of leadership. And that's how you grow in how to be a great leader by experiencing it, right? So, but Notice, now I just gave you two instances that are so near and dear to me, but there are literally thousands of these. We make stuff up all the time. I call them MSUs because we don't know any better. It's all we know. 
And we just think people will look at you and go, wow, Mary Jo, why are you so competitive? Well, that's just the way I was born. Mary Jo, why do you always love to run it? Because I love leadership, right? That's just the way I am. Not understanding that this is stuff that was programmed by my experiences in my early childhood. Now, how many do you think are going on inside of you? I'll suggest many. And that's one of the things why I started this program called Kryptonite Breakthrough, because all of these little things that we carry forward in our life and our behavioral patterns are all part of the program that we've done. So much of it. And until you start doing the discovery work, I talk about understanding the discovery work. What's stored in your subconscious that's controlling you today? And if you don't do the discovery work of finding it and then reframing it, you'll stay stuck the rest of your life. And it's true about every person I meet. If you haven't done this kind of work, you're going to stay stuck. So we call it fact meaning. What facts in our life? What meaning did I give it? And how is it controlling me today? And now let's go back and reframe it so that you can be freed up from some of those crazy things that you established at four years old. Get, I mean, starting at four, some of this happened at 10 or 12. Some people get married, they get divorced and they never get married again. You know why? Because marriage doesn't work. That's an interesting conclusion, right? I mean, how many of us have been married? 30 years, more than some of you, 50 maybe. But I, marriage works. <laughs> Let's suggest curl the finger around and say, maybe it's me that's not working in the marriage, right? I mean, but we draw these conclusions out of experiences we have that stop us from being the greatness that we're called to be. So that's a you know big piece of the course. I love to teach listening skills because... Um, I came across a gal, Carol McCall, who is teaching listening skills. This is about 20 years ago, and she was phenomenal. Her goal was to create 1 million better listeners. And when I came across her, I came to the conclusion, Mary Jo, you are a really lousy listener. You love to talk so much, as you see right now, right? I can go on, wax on for hours. I love to teach and train. I love to talk and communicate. But I wasn't a good listener. Now, where do we learn how to listen? and listening as a skill. When did you take that in school? Did you get listening skill training in kindergarten? How about grade school? Junior high, high school, college? Only if you went into psychology. It's the only time you get trained on how to be a great listener. Otherwise, guess what you've done? You've just duplicated mom or dad or a combination of the two. I duplicated my mother. She was the world's worst listener. And so Mary Jo, that's how I learned how not to listen, right? <laughs> and so, so that's where I was as well. And uh, so that was gigantic, how to become a great listener, an empathic listener. So you really are be with the other person. And, and so I teach that as well, because it's so powerful, powerful for us in Manatech. Oh my goodness. We love to go tell everybody, talk, 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 talk. Let me talk to you about glyconutrients. Let me talk to you about amateurs. Let me talk to you about it. Blah, 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 blah. We can talk a great story and we can just bury people with everything we say. I say like one tenth of what I used to say, and I signing up more people than ever in my life. I do more business in Manatech today doing it part time than when I was doing it full time because it's truly asking questions and just listen. It's a beautiful approach to life, but it's something we need to learn how to be great listeners, right? And here's a helpful hint, write this down. Listen and silent have exactly the same letters. It's kind of cool, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, really cool. <laughs> but, but when we wanna tell all the time and talk all the time, <laughs> We can't be listening and talking at the same time. So it's a beautiful gift. So that's another aspect of my mindset course. And there, there's so many others. I, I'll, I'll talk about one more that I think is like so empowering as well. It's kind of like, um, you know, we live life and, and, and how many of us have been around 30 plus years and we're still kind of feeling like we're on the sailboat, but we kind of, our life kind of goes depending on which way the wind blows we might have a path. You've all chosen Manatech as one of the multiple streams of income you have or the mainstream of income for you. And that's great. And you love health. But how do you know you're really living the life you are meant to live? 
How do you know you're really filling your soul? How do you know that? How do you know you're really truly fulfilling and, and feeding your most important core values for you? Most of us don't have a clue. I'm going to say 99.99% of this world has no idea what their number one core value is or their number two core value or number three core value. Now, some people will say, well, I know what mine is, Mary Jo. Mine's my Lord and Savior. And I go, oh, that's real clarity. Because how many values are in the Bible? <laughs> right? Are you following me? Hundreds. <laughs> Jesus Christ represented hundreds of values. So you don't have any more clarity than where you started from on what your most important core values are. And if you go, well, I'm just going to look up on the internet and see what my core values are. I'll just find a list and I'll pick up. You know, the, if you go do that on the internet, you're going to find a list of like 2,000 core values. Oh, good luck picking those out and deciding which ones are your most important to you. Are you following me? You're going to be blown away by that experience. You're going to say, well, Mary Jo, I took the 2,000 on that list and I've narrowed it down. I'm only I'm down to 540. <laughs> I'm going to start laughing. And go, that doesn't help you any more than having 2,000, right? I mean, I'm not saying that there aren't a lot of values out there that are important to you. But what is the most important core value for you? What's number two? What's number three? You follow? Because if you don't know that, then you can't have that center board put in your sailboat and be on a direction that totally fulfills you as a person. You want to really understand what's most important for you. What fills your soul? What serves you beyond anything else that you could be doing? And that's one of the aspects of my course that I teach is discovering your core values because each and every one of us is totally uniquely made. We're totally uniquely made. And so understanding what our most important core values are and then living them every day, allowing that to be what guides you in your life and your decision-making Truly, you'll live a life that you never dreamt of. I mean, or only dreamt of, because now you're going to feel fulfilled in everything you do each day of your life. And that was part of my discovery work I did in my 30s. And that's part of what I teach in my kryptonite breakthrough, because it's so powerful to know, you know what, if it's not consistent with my core values, I don't do it. It doesn't fit in my life because I know that I know that I know this is most important to me in what I do and how I live my life, right? So being able to do that examination and find it, it's a, I do an exercise around that that's pretty powerful in my kryptonite class that really helps people discover that because the discovery for me totally changed my life. So why would I want to help other people? And you probably could guess what Mary Jo's number one core value is. I'm here on this call. I could be doing a thousand other things. And I'm here addressing, you know, Manatech Australia. <laughs> Contribution. Exactly. Thanks, Sharon. It's exactly what it is. When I'm in contribution, I'm my highest high. It's why Mary Jo does Zoom evangelism all around the world, because I love sharing the gospel. I love leading people to Christ. That's the greatest contribution as a Christian I can make to any person, right? And I love going out of my way and doing outreach programs and gifts. And I love the charitable foundation I set up 15 years ago with that million dollars, right? And I serve people in all sorts of ways. It's just part of my soul. It's my, it, it feeds me every day. When I get phone calls from people and say, Mary Jo, do you still do tax work or do you still do legal work? I said, what do you need? And I'll go, I'll do people's wills and all sorts of stuff just to help them out because I have that in my background. I have legal background and I'm going to utilize it if it helps somebody out, right? And I get a lot of phone calls on that. Right now I'm helping a woman sell her company here in the Dallas area. That was her baby. She started 20 years ago. 
And I think I'm doing more mindset work with her than legal work <laughs> because it's hard to sell your baby, right? <laughs> anyway, but it's just a beautiful combination to be able. And why do I do it? I don't. I, I never. I don't do this to make money. I do it because I can be of contribution. I can help people achieve the results they want in their life. So that's what drives Mary Jo is contribution. That's my number one, right? And I'll and, and my number two is something called trust. And why do you think trust is my number two core value? Now, this isn't you. This is Mary Jo. Each of you do your own discoveries. So, and don't go, I want to be just like Mary Jo. No, you don't. You want to be you. Each of us is driven differently. Trust came as a critical one for me because you know what? People are so important to me. And what underlines every relationship I have with anyone is trust. If I don't have trust, I, there's brokenness in the relationship. So if you try to take people out of my life, oh my gosh, I'm a disaster area. I know some of you laugh and you go, Mary Jo, I love being a hermit up in the mountains. I go, great, that's you, but it's not me. You know, I want to be around as many people and impact as many people as I can. But if I can't trust a person, how do I build relationships, right? And then my third number three core value is something called commitment. Because I truly believe without commitment, nothing gets done. If you're not committed, it's not gonna happen. You're relying on luck to take you forward. So getting up and being committed. And some people say, well, Mary Jo, how do you do that? And I go, well, here's one way. I'm, I, you know, a lot of you know, I do my Monday calls. I do so much. I have a beeline to, to Al Bala, any single, in fact, I probably sent them two texts just today. We constantly are back and forth, how to make Manatech better, right? So it's all that kind of stuff. But, you know, the commitment level is, is huge. I'm totally committed to helping this company be the best it can be. It's important to me to help them be the best, not for Mary Jo's sake, but for all of your sake, I believe every single person that gets involved in Manatech should have an equal opportunity for them to thrive in this company. So if there's anything I can do to help make it better, you bet I'm all over it. And I continue to serve in that fashion because I'm committed to making that happen. And people go, well, how do you, how, what makes you driven like that? And here, I'll just tell you, my life is about every morning I wake up. And the first thing I say to myself is, I'm going to be my best today. I just set a standard for myself. Do I always, am I always the best? No. <laughs> but if you set yourself a standard of life, that means I don't roll over and hit the alarm clock snooze button three times before I get out of bed, right? Because there are things to do. There are people to impact. There's, you know, it, there's just so much out there in life worth living to go make a difference in people's lives and impact people's lives. So that's why Mary Jo flies out of bed when that alarm goes, boom, I'm out. I'm gonna be my best today. And it's just a standard I apply in my life. So I don't get lazy with things. I don't, I, do I take time off? Absolutely. Family time, friendship time, you know, I, I you know, but it's just great to be committed to looking at everything I do instead of selling myself short, even on like the Monday calls I do, I, you know, I'll read, I'll say, okay, somebody said, Mary Jo, there's a good book out there. Like I just did one on something called Hook Point, right? About how to market on social media. And so I said, okay, I'll read that. They told me on Friday. So what did I do? I read the whole book and outlined it and trained it Monday morning at 10 o'clock a.m. Because somebody mentioned it and wanted to do it. So how do I, how do I show up being my best? I go, just do it. I just do it and support people that way. So it's just, you know, just looking at what's your level of commitment. And that applies equally, whether you want to win an incentive trip, you know, as people say, well, Mary Jo, what's a mindset about winning incentive trips? And, and, because if you know Mary Jo, I win all of them, right? I mean, and it's not, it's not because I changed the standard of how I do my Manatech business. It's just, I be my best, right? And now you can play the game of really working, you know, blitz creating the first few months because that's the easiest way to win any incentive. And then you can kind of, you know, 
cruise into the final instead of the people that call me two months before the incentives were going, Mary Jo, I need to sign up 10 more people, blah, blah, blah. What should I do? And I said, you should start earlier. <laughs> you know, I, I can't help but being honest, right? I mean, I mean, I just lay and go, what a rare, what, I mean, it's like a train wreck. You know, if you want to have a flourishing Manatech business, then go out there and commit yourself to having a flourishing Manatech business. It takes time and it takes effort and it takes caring about other people. And that's what you do. You just go out there and just everybody you meet. And it's not about going up and talking to everybody. Hey, I got these great products, blah, 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 blah. You know, <laughs> Here, I'll give you a clue. One of the things I just taught my people the other day, I said, you know what, when I go through the grocery store, how do I get five new leads? Are you ready? I'll be in the grocery store, right? And I can talk to people about squeezing the grapefruits or something like that and have fun. And you can just have fun and just share a little bit, but I don't share Manatech, right? I don't talk about Manatech in the grocery store, but I get five really great leads. So I'll go up in the, somebody will be reading the back of a box of grocery, you know, like, uh, you know, cereal or something in the grocery store. And I'll walk over to them and I'll go, I, I'm sorry, but I couldn't help but see you trying to read those crazy labels. Have you ever heard of Fujucate? And I'll introduce them to that incredible app that each of you can get on your phone called Fujucate. How many of you are familiar with Fujucate? It's that little guy that they got that, it's got a green, it, it's a green, it's like an orange with a, with a green leaves on it. Can you see my finger pointing at it right there? You got it? food. It's called food you cake, like educate, but F O O D U C A T E. Food you cake. So I'll go look at this app. This app came. I, I used to do grocery shopping tours and teach everybody how to buy groceries that are healthy for people and how to read labels. And, lots. and then this app came out, and I'm telling you, it's like 95% totally accurate. I love it. All you have to do is open the app and point it at the UBC label and it'll give you a grade, A, B, C, A minus, B plus, and you can know right away without reading anything. Just put, and they're so bloody thrilled that they don't have to read a label again. And I, so I tell them and they'll go, well, how do I get that? Well, do you think I give it room right there? I go, I go, hey, just give me your email address or your, your phone number and I'll send it to you. Hello, what did I just pick up? Their contact information. And their name, and now guess what? Too bad. They're going to be a Manatech associate probably in another seven days. Right? <laughs> Are you following me? Because you just contributed to their life in such a significant way, and you now develop a relationship with them, and then you tell them more about what you do and about this incredible number one breakthrough in nutritional science in the last 25 years. And that's what I call Amber Toast with everybody. We have the number one breakthrough in nutritional science in the last 25 years. If you're interested, great. Not great. Well, so they're just little things like that, just for us to be able to go out there and make a difference in people's lives every day. And Manatech is such a cool vehicle because it solves two of the most critical. And I, I, I call it four. Do you guys want to get this? I mean, this is kind of fun too that I've taught everybody now in Manatech. I call it the four things. A lot of times you talk about health, right? I mean, that's what, Manatech products are. And we talk about making money, right? What's the third one? M5M. We're 100% all in committed to getting these nutrients to orphans around the world. And by the way, I just spoke at the SOAR conference in Philadelphia last weekend. And SOAR has to do with the Armenian children that were maimed when the Turkish had that onslaught slaughterhouse in Armenia. And these children have no parents. Some of them can't even walk and talk or they have all sorts of, and guess what? I worked eight and a half, nine months. Now M5M is shipping to Armenia for the first time in May. Isn't that awesome? So that's number three. So that's M5M. So we got the health and the wealth and we got making a difference in the world for those who can't help themselves. And then, so you go, well, Mary Jo, what's number four? Here's number four, don't ever leave this out. An incredible community of people. Does this make sense? I mean, we love each other in Manatech because we have that same passion and heart to help other people. Do you know how many people are looking for community today? Very few are not. They're looking to be part of something bigger than themselves. And we in Manatech 
have a gift in that. So when you go and talk about what is Manatech, I'm telling you, talk about those four things. Don't always be just talking about glyconutrients. Talk about all the rest that it can bring to you and your family and the people that you know. And that's how I share Manatech. So I guess that's all I have to say. Did I talk too long or too short or whatever? But I just hope you guys take away from all of this and just go out there and make a difference. Win your incentives. They're just, can you do it? Yes, you can. Just look at yourself and say, yes, I can. And you get the right mindset and go do it, right? Good. Everybody, great. How awesome was that, Mary Jo? You're amazing. Thank you so very oh, much. You guys are amazing. You guys are all amazing. Any questions that um, we can help anybody with for any questions? I think you covered the basics. You can take that and run with it, couldn't you guys? Yeah, I think great. we're done. We're just full of gratitude. Absolutely. So, me too. Gratitude for you having me here today. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. Uh, really awesome, Mary Jo. Thank you so much. I had so many goosebumps through that. And I think we this all um, and 45 minutes is a really good length of time pe for people to just listen again and again. So God bless you. God bless all of you guys. Let's go out there and make a difference and win that incentive. I hear you got one coming up, right? Or you they Tasmania, just here we come. Okay. I, oh. that's that's a place I've never been. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's awesome. Tas Tasmania has a bit of everything. Um the the link for your course. Web, oh, do you have a Chris web link? Yikes, now you're asking. Um, geez, maybe I can send, ask Lydia. Yeah, probably ask Lydia and send it out. We've already had a couple of the Australians get involved in the course and they had great results. I mean, they had so much fun. So um, yeah, so join me in the course. You'll love it. It's eight weeks and it's like a blast. It's just you're you'll grow a lot. And and the whole purpose again is basically how do I help you get rid of what's holding you back? That's because I know each and every one of us has unlimited capacity. It's just, but we hold ourselves back and it's like free meta. So I'd love to have you in the class. I think the eight week course is $495. But the other thing for all of you, guess what Mary Jo does? This is four years I've been running this class. And I give any, if you go through my eight weeks and you go, Mary Jo, I really didn't get anything out of the class. I'll write you a check and give you a hundred cents back on the dollar. Now, how many people do you think have done that in four years? zero <laughs> so i don't want you to count on it <laughs> because because i work with you and you have access to mary Jo during the whole eight weeks so if something comes up to you personally you can set up a separate you know zoom call with mary Jo, and i'll help you get over whatever that is if it's too personal that you don't want to talk about it in a class setting and everybody signs confidentiality agreements as well but i'll be more than happy to have that one-on-one -on -one call good oh there's That's lydia awesome. there's the boss there then you want to, oh, she's there. Maybe she'll contribute. Yeah, sure. How yes, they might be able to look at the kryptonite register for a kryptonite class. I will put the link in the chat if that's okay. There you go. Awesome. Thanks, Lydia. Thanks, Lydia. I, I figured you were needing that help. <laughs> <laughs> she's psychic too, Lydia. Very clever. <laughs> uh, she's, she's been working for me for 18 years now. Yeah, I know. As long as I've known you, yes. I know That's what awesome. I, she's just been a, a precious for me and, and holds me totally incapable of technology because I rely on her exclusively. <laughs> so when it comes to technology, I go, Lydia, right? no, but it's great. There it is. She's got it in there for you. Yeah. A uh, couple oh. of questions. Do you want to answer those or are we um, set? I don't know. No, I don't think there, I don't see any questions or did I miss them? Mine says two participants raised hand. I think they, that was, They've been there the whole time. Yeah. They're participating in your uh, presentation. Okay. All right, sure. everybody. I'll put that link on the Facebook page under this event. Um, and if you miss it, just email me and I'll give it to you. So Mary Jo, Lydia, thank you both so very much. Thank you and so much. Enjoyed it. Okay, you guys go out and knock it out of the park. Yeah, have a great weekend, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone.